We missed some absolutely colossal information in chapter 1086. I know that most viewers of this channel just read the scans, but this is why you absolutely need to check the official as well, because these translations are night and day. We now know more about Emu's motivations. We have a deeper understanding of Figgle and Garling's background. Also, Emu's super weapon may be very, very different to what we thought. And in a rather sad announcement, it is now confirmed that Saint Mosgard is dead. The official translation confirms that Saint Mosgard is indeed dead. The scans were very vague about it, saying that he had been sentenced to execution, making it seem like that event had yet to play out or had yet to play out in full. However, the official is very, very clear. Most guard was executed past tense and the chapter now has a real dark ending. This isn't a situation where we have a cliffhanger and a ray of hope to save most guard. Nah, this dude is gone. And I really like this decision because as I often state at great length, I wish that Oda would be less precious with his characters, which doesn't mean that One Piece should become a Game of Thrones style bloodbath but I think that there is no substitute in storytelling for actions having consequences. And what Mosgard did was, it was a pretty extreme action. So as much as I do genuinely like him, I'm glad that it was met with an equally as extreme consequence. In fact, not equally, it was met with a significantly more extreme consequence. When Luffy hit St. Charles, they called down a Marine Admiral to deal with him. Striking a world noble is quite possibly the most serious crime one could commit in this world. And Mosgard did it not only once, but twice, three times if you count both sides and Leo, and I love the no-nonsense approach to punishing him. These recent Reverie chapters have done a fantastic job of making the world government seem like a truly terrifying power again. Because during Wano, the world government was a bit of a joke, because all of their plans ended up hurting them and inadvertently awakening Gear 5th. And then we had Ryukugyu appearing on Wano, which was also a bit of a disaster, and it started to make the world government look quite incompetent. But now the world government have well and truly reclaimed their position. I genuinely fear this organization. To reflect on Mosgard for a bit, he was a character who surprised me. Introduced during Fishman Island, which was a notoriously unpopular arc to be reading weekly at the time, but he and Otohime proved better than anyone else that there is a future where humans and fishmen can live together under the sun. And very importantly, Mosgard proved that even world nobles can be redeemed. In fact, I would go so far as to say that Mosgard's transformation was the greatest ray of hope we've experienced in this series so far. And that's why it's all the more powerful to have snuffed it out. And it's particularly twisted because because in Garling's introduction panel, you can see the other world nobles cheering behind him. That's not surprising at all, but it does feel wrong to see them like this, because these are the faces and poses that Oda usually reserves for heroic situations. Like say crowds cheering on Luffy fighting Doflamingo, for example. So to have that situation inverted is quite unsettling. And of course, this also has the effect of turning Garling into a much more serious figure. It was bad enough when we knew that Mosgard was sentenced to be executed, but now I look at Garling, more specifically, I look at his sword, and I think to myself, that blade just killed someone. Someone who stood at the very pinnacle of this world and that power was used with no hesitation whatsoever. Okay, so a thing now. I've been getting this question a lot in the comments. Too many times for me to answer them all individually, but a lot of people are confused as to why we're saying that Garling is related to Shanks. And I think that's fair enough because it's one of those moments where I remember that no, not everyone is a super hardcore fictional pirate fiend. The reason why this relation is being made is due to film Red. In that movie, the elders heavily imply that Shanks is a member of the Figgeland family. So now another Figgeland pops up. And so of course he's practically guaranteed to be related to Shanks, which I guess is the problem with revealing canon information in films because not everyone goes and sees the film. So they miss out on some pretty massive information. Garling is the subject to a translation controversy in 1086 though, because in the scans he was labeled as the King of God Valley. However, this may not be the case. The Viz translation decided to label Garling as the former ruler of God Valley, which is a bit more vague, but only really causes mild semantic issues. However, however, it is also possible that neither of these are correct. For example, the French translation used the word champion, or I guess, Champion or Campion? You don't say the H, do you? Doesn't matter, let's use English again, Champion. And there's been a massive discussion online about how the term in Japanese could also be used to refer to a champion or a hero, just as it could a king or a ruler, which might make sense because Garp was given a similar title after his involvement on God Valley. That's why he's known as Garp the hero. Although the titles of both Garling and Garp do differ in Japanese. So according to the library of Ohara, the most likely translation would still imply that Garling held an authority position over God Valley, whether that was specific 
specifically a king or not, it, uh, it, it, it's a different matter, because there are plenty of One Piece nations that don't necessarily operate under a monarchy system. Quick update time now. I was legitimately about to render this video when I discovered that Viz, in a very rare situation, have actually gone back and changed the translation of Garling's introduction. He is now referred to as, quote, a dominating figure who once distinguished himself at a place called God Valley. So after all of that, it does seem as if Garling is a character more on the Garp, the hero side of the spectrum, than he is on the king or ruler side. But just a note on the official translation now. The reason why Viz is generally the source we should take as gospel is because they have direct access to Shueisha. If there are any tricky translation questions they can ask. However, I should point out that they don't do this for each and every little thing. And in this chapter, there happened to be a lot of each and every little thing. So the official translator, Stephen Paul, often gets put in this very unenviable position about having to just you know, go with the best guess, which again, I do not envy. Because there is no other manga series on the planet where the translation is so heavily scrutinized. And to be fair, it's because in a series like One Piece, even simple linguistic changes can completely change the meaning of certain characters, stories, events, etc. But with that said, Viz does have a bit of a controversy in this chapter. In the scans, Emu refers to Vegapunk's creation as the Mother Flame. However, in the Viz translation, this has been labeled as the Mother Frame. And this is very interesting because obviously, as similar as they sound in English, frame and flame have completely different words in Japanese. The issue is that this word was not written in Japanese. In the source text, it is written in English via katakana. And interestingly enough, the words frame and frame are pronounced differently in katakana. So we have frame, which is furemu, and then we also have flame, which is furemu. It's a painfully tiny difference, but in the chapter, it's written as a ladder. So Viz may be wrong in this case, and the invention is still supposed to be called the mother flame. Also, a lot of people have pointed out that furemu actually contains the word emu as well, which no matter which way this goes is a fun thing to note, because that's the sort of thing Oda is very consciously aware of when naming things. But also it's, look, it's complicated. Whilst most bilingual speakers do seem to agree that flame is more correct, several of them have also stated that either is acceptable and that it may even be an intentional pun. Like say there's a frame structure designed to deliver flame, death and destruction. And yet I know this seems like a really minor and really painful little difference. And you know what? If you're just a casual reader or watcher, then there's no real reason to care. But fire as an energy source is something that has been specifically set up on Egghead Island with the idea to build their own sun and of course hunt for the ancient fuel source. So in this case, I do think it's very important to dig deeper. I think it's also worth saying that the original Japanese may also have been wrong. Again, the words sound so similar and One Piece does often run into inconsistencies when it uses direct English. So until the name is mentioned again, it's gonna be hard to tell. Something that I neglected to mention in the chapter video is that the elders also state that the Lucia weapon experiment might influence how they handle the Egghead Island situation. I guess implying that they could use the mother frame flame there as well. Although since they've gone all out and just sent a bazillion Marines out there, they may have elected not to do this. Maybe the mother flame frame flame. Maybe the weapon was deemed a bit too effective and they wanted to preserve more of the Egghead technology. It would be interesting though, to be confronted with the invention and to have Stella see his incoming potential destruction with his own eyes. Destruction that was of his own making. A sort of pursuit of science hubris. We're not done yet, we're nowhere near done. Because one of the most fascinating differences between scans and the official is Emu's dialogue about Vivi. In the scans, Emu said to retrieve Vivi, which is very cold and direct. Whilst with Viz, Emu says, I desire Vivi, which is the exact opposite. And I guess something to note first, in the original Japanese, Emu speaks in third person. They refer to themselves as Mu, which I think is adorable. But Viz decided to streamline that and just have Emu speaking in the first person using I, which might be the translator seeing it as a better pragmatic approach. Or it might be that Viz did take this up with Shueisha. Because Japanese, is it's a fun language because it has about a billion different ways just to say the word I. And I suppose it is possible that Emu is using a fictional in-world pronoun to refer to themselves. The reasoning for this may be to portray Emu as not of this time. Like he's using some sort of fictional ancient dialect, which I wouldn't put past Oda, but the, the, I don't know, that's pure speculation. However, in Viz, this line opens up a whole new world of implications. Before, I think that seeking Vivi was natural. She's a Nefertari and a member of the D-Clan, so of course Emu would want to hunt and purge her. But now Emu desires Vivi. And to me, that makes his plan sound a lot more sinister. And it might lead to the idea that Emu and Lily were a bit of a thing back in the day, some eight to 900 years ago. Or perhaps Emu might have had a one-sided obsessive dynamic. Which is creepy because Emu may be seeking out Vivi to rekindle that because she reminds him so, so much of Lily. In fact, when it comes to character motivations, right now the only thing we know about Emu is his interest in the Nefertari clan. Emu personally 
personally appeared before Cobra, Emu elected to answer a question about Lily, and now Emu has an obsession with Vivi. To the Elder Stars, this is something I warned would probably be quite different in Viz, but their names are actually not too bad. The only correction to be made is St. Topman Walkury instead of Valkyrie, but either way, it's referencing Mercury. And just a fun fact from the Library of O'Hara here, in Japanese, Mercury is called Suisei, basically meaning water planet. So that's why we have the name Walkury. It's a Japanese-inspired English portmanteau of water and Mercury. But I have to say the other names, they were pretty surprisingly bang on. One thing I want to address is that the scans made a pretty bold decision to rename the five elder stars as a group, and they referred to them as the five elder planets. And you might remember this idea from another video we did, but it's because in Japanese, the kanji for star can also mean planet. So Gorosei effectively means both five elder stars and five elder planets. So I can see why it might make some sense to rename them. It's only really a consistency problem in English because in Japanese, it's one of those situations where it's like, oh wow, I was reading it wrong this entire time. What an epic revelation. Actually come to think of it, it's not an issue in the English manga at all. In the official translation, this quintet of geriatrics are always referred to as simply the five elders. Even when they were first introduced in English, they were called the five elders. The five elder stars translation actually comes from the Funimation dub. And interestingly, they stopped using it after a while. But it's one of those terms that has prominently been used by fans online for the last, I mean, mate, I don't know, 15 to 20 years? More actually, because they first appeared in chapter 233, which was released in June 2002, which means that their names were revealed almost exactly on their 21st anniversary of existence. And not only that, but the elders also appear in the exact same positions in chapter 1086 as they were in chapter 233 when they were introduced. So if you look at these two chapters out of context, it would appear that they have literally not moved in 21 years. And you know what? That's, that's not too far from the truth. But it's essential to note that on the rare occasions where the five elders text is romanized in the series, it simply refers to them as the five elders, which I imagine was intentional so as not to give away what the say in Gorosei was referring to. And I think that's what the Viz translation was getting at as well. It didn't want to commit to either star or planet and also either five elder stars or five elder planets. It sounds a bit uh, in English, just doesn't sound quite natural. But essentially, yeah, you could refer to them as the five elder planets if you so desired, because that's, that's literally the title. But that clears that up. We don't usually do videos like this because the translations do tend to be pretty uniform, but this chapter in particular was quite the aberration and I thought it was important to clarify everything.